So recently I reviewed the Sabrent Rocket 4.0. This is a single NVMe, four terabytes. It's really fast, it's pretty good. It's definitely the easy button solution. And if you're on an operating system like Windows, which doesn't have good built-in support for a bootable RAID array, I mean, you can kind of do the VROC thing, you know, it's a little bit of a hassle if you want to use more than one. And you could definitely set up a mirror of these and, you know, be pretty good, be pretty off to the races. But I want to show you something a little different, a little more special. I want to show you something aimed more for workstations. See, where we're going, we're going to need a lot of PCI Express lanes. A lot of PCI Express lanes. These are the new BGA4 form factor M.2 from Kioxia. Uh, formerly Toshiba Mem Memory Systems, but they've already got 20% of the market. They're huge, but this really underscores a bunch of things. One, look at this form factor. I mean, this is technically an M.2 form factor, but the M.2 is actually larger than it needs to be. I mean, you could totally have an M.2 that's even smaller than this, that's just the BGA package. Like, you could physically have a smaller package here. And it's the full PCI Express by four. A single BGA4 package contains the NVMe controller and the NAND flash memory, and this is a terabyte. So it's it's kind of a sea change in the industry, and I did another video about that on, on PCI Express because PCI Express changes at the top of the industry and the bottom of the industry are coming. At the top of the industry in servers and interconnects because when you've got a pool of servers that you need to connect together, Ethernet is not a thing. It's, well, Ethernet can be a thing, and Ethernet has its place, but when you're connecting together a bunch of really high-performance servers in the same rack, sharing storage and compute resources, compute resources being like GPUs, PCI Express makes a lot more sense than most other connects. In the past, it's been things like Ethernet and InfiniBand and other more exotic solutions, but now it's getting to the point where just PCI Express makes sense. And also on the small devices for like phones and stuff like that, look at this package. Like even if you're an obsessive compulsive designer at Apple and uh, you want, you know, the design of the thing to not take a back seat to literally anything, if you look at this form factor, you have no excuse about taking away upgradability because the tiny, tiny M.2 form factor here means that literally anything, I mean, this is, this would even work in like an iPhone 12 and there's no compromises or sacrifices here. This is a PCI Express interface. You don't have to worry about some weird proprietary interface or carriers or anything like that. You could even just, you know, solder this directly onto something and it's, you know, just the one BGA package, but do you really lose a lot making it upgradable, especially in this kind of a form factor? Um, some of the really, really small computers like the GPD Win, this will fit pretty well in there. I'm probably going to do a video on upgrading or doing something with those GPD Win devices. But for workstations, where does this make sense? Like the ultra small form factor, does it make sense for workstations? Because the thing that you get with these is not just the small form factor, it's also super power frugal. So yeah, these are on the order of about 5 watts. This is kind of record breaking in terms of power utilization. I showed how you can use these in cameras like our Lumix S1 because it's basically just a glorified PCI Express interface. And a lot of those cameras are built for PCI Express devices that are gonna consume a lot of power and generate a lot of heat. But these are not like that because these are newer generation devices because you can do all this in five watts. Now, of course, in five watts, you're not gonna win any LAN speed records, but I've got a fix for that. If you bought a high enough end motherboard, chances are it came with something like this. This is the uh, PCIe mode support uh, only M.2 expander from MSI. And so this is four, you know, four lane M.2s that are mapped to a single PCI Express 16 interface here. And yeah, you can totally use those here. You get the connection and you're good to go. Now, you'll have to use the heat sink with this one to hold it down because uh, the screw holes are not in exactly the right places. But this would give you four terabytes on a single card, four terabytes of raw capacity. But this is kind of bulky. If you picked up a gigabyte motherboard or another motherboard like that, you may have gotten a carrier like this. This is what it looks like without its shroud. See, it's just got four here. And again, you know, this is, this is tape that you're supposed to peel off. 
uh, but your you know your M.2s two can go there. And even though it doesn't necessarily screw down when you put the heat sink on it here, um, you'll be a little bit you'll be a little bit better off in terms of like it will hold it down. Or you can three D print a bracket or an extension or something like that. But again, four terabytes on a carrier. But you know this is designed for obviously these really really high heat generation. Uh, PCI Express 4 devices. And this is also a PCI Express 4 carrier card. You've got read drivers on the back. This is a PCI Express 3 interface because obviously 5 watts. So, we've also got this. This is more server grade. This is a Gigabyte uh, CMT4034. I love this because it's so compact, but it's really designed for the airflow that you get in a uh, server type situation. So, you really would want to use this with some heat sinks because uh, cramming four M.2 devices here, two on the front, two on the back, uh, it would really sort of uh, generate a lot of heat. I'm using some poster putty here uh, to make it a little easier for me to uh, remove and reinstall M.2, but I can install four of these BGA devices on this RAID card. And the reason that this is exciting is because it gives me a little bit of redundancy. You see, having four terabytes of information on a device like this sort of terrifies me. What if it dies? It recover, but you know, recovering is basically going to be impossible. The flash devices have a rotating key. It's really, really difficult to do competent and good recovery from devices like this should they fail. Now, granted, they're orders of magnitude more reliable than mechanical spinning rust. But what if I could show you, at least in Linux, at least in a workstation, that you could use this, a bunch of these, and set up RAID Z1, or RAID 5, or RAID Z2, or RAID 10. You could do all of that with four devices. So if you want a striped mirror, you can do that. If you want to do you know, one drive worth of redundancy, you can do that. If you just want to RAID 0 them together so that if any one drive dies, you lose all the information, you can do that. And the Ubuntu 20.04 installer supports that right out of the box. Uh, furthermore, if you've got a threader per workstation, like the one behind me, that's based on the ROG Zenith Extreme 2 Alpha. It's got the 32 core. No, actually, this one's the 64 core. This behind me is a 64 core monster system. It has five M.2 ports right on the motherboard. There's one on the back, two on the DIM.2, and two on the motherboard. So I can install four of my, and still have a slot left over because I got four of these. Um, and then I can run RAID Z1 and the Ubuntu 20.04 installer supports that. If you're looking for a walkthrough of using Ubuntu 20.04 uh, and getting RAID Z1 set up, there's a guide for that on the level one forum. Basically you just make the bootable USB stick, shove it in and you, you, when you go through and you go through advanced, it's like, hey, I wanna use the ZFS on root thing. It'll set up the partitions appropriately and then any one of your M.2s can die. Now the Ubuntu installer, experimentally supports ZFS, but it's actually got some fairly severe bugs. So I recommend that you take out all of the disks that you're not going to use with Ubuntu. So if you're planning to dual boot or something like that, take that device out of your system. You definitely do not need it. And the installer will struggle with it because when you get to the screen in the installer, it's like, let's erase the disk. Uh, no, you're not gonna do that. So I dropped to the command line and manually created my ZFS pool. And that's what I was gonna show you how to do. But then the problem is that when you go back into the installer, it detects that the partition type is ZFS correctly, but it won't let you mount that as root. You can format it as ext3 or something like that, uh, and then mount it as root, but there's no actual option in the drop-down menu to specify the, to just leave the partition alone uh, even though you don't check format. So like if you specify ext4 and you don't check format, the installer's like, oh, this is not, you know, ext4 is different than ZFS. I'm gonna check the check mark to format it, even though you told it not to format it. It's really annoying and I feel like that's a bug because it's actually less work to do this in Arch than it is Ubuntu. Nevertheless, there's a guide in the level one forum. You can just run through the wizard and do the experimental ZFS support. And we can add more devices later. It's fine move everything over. That's a different tutorial. And I'm pretty sure the 19.04 uh, version of the installer would let you specify a pre-existing ZFS pool as root. I'm pretty sure I did that manually before and it was fine. Now you don't have to use the fancy low power uh, Kioxia, you know, M.2 one terabyte drives, but 
Um, you can use any M.2s. Also, look at cost. These are around $100 each. Okay, well, the BGA-4, they're kind of fancy, and it's an OEM-only thing right now. But just a commodity one terabyte NVMe. Just your standard issue, you know, nothing fancy about it. So we've got the separate controller and the, you know, standard issue NAND chips. It's around $100 a terabyte. The price is fluctuating a little bit. So it's sort of on the upward, upward swing at the time that I'm doing this video. But four one terabyte drives cost less than one four terabyte drive. It is more convenient and easier to deal with one four terabyte drive, but redundancy, reliability, I mean, the reliability is actually quite good, but you know, do you want the extra layer of redundancy and protection? Is that worth something to you? Well, you're gonna lose it one quarter of your total usable space if you do RAID Z1. You would lose half of your space if you did something like RAID 10, um, but you would potentially have throughput and transfer benefits from that because you're striping together two mirrors. So it, it, two of your, up to two of your, your M.2s could die. Um, although if the wrong two die, then you would still lose all of your information. But if the right two die, you, you would be okay. Uh, so RAID Z1 is probably a little bit better. And also there have been recent patches to RAID Z that help a bit with performance because ZFS is a file system that has a lot of overhead. And again, super high performance M.2 doesn't really matter as much. If you're looking for redundancy, the uh, performance aspect is maybe not as important as redundancy. So it's sort of a give and take. If you like to live dangerously, some people do find M.2s to be reliable enough to run in RAID 0. Certainly for workstations where literally everything is mirrored somewhere else in real time or I'm mounting something off of NFS or mounting something from some network file system, then yeah, it doesn't matter. I'm just, I'm just after that raw build speed or raw capacity because you know, building things like Open Embedded takes a lot of disk space and uh, it's a lot of I.O. and a lot of writing. So there you go. I'm currently looking on AliExpress for a super, super, super compact M.2 adapter that'll take these these tiny little BGA packages and give me a super compact RAID adapter because I would love to do that. I'd also like to mod a palm top, maybe an older palm top with a terabyte of storage because that form factor is really awesome. I mean, that's the only thing that GPD Win, uh, some of the GPD Win, like the really the palm tops um, that they have, um, that's the form factor that you use. But this is like the best bang for the buck in terms of capacity and power utilization. I mean, something on the order of five watts is crazy. So again, thanks to Kioxia for sending these so that I could do some, some mad science and some experiments. I've also got a, uh, an XQD adapter coming that is physically this big. There's no more ribbon cable, but that's not here yet. But I'm really excited for that because you could pick these up and the XQD carrier for them and have an M.2 that fits inside of a camera. How insane is that? So pretty exciting stuff. I'm Wendell, this is level one. I'm signing up and I'll catch you later.